Just bounce to this. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Brandon Clements. Welcome back to Substance Painter Part 2 of our series on Substance Painter. Right now, what we're doing is we are inside of Substance Designer. So let's go ahead and bring in some of our different uh, objects. The only thing we're using right now is a Stormtrooper helmet. So we need to bring that in, and we're going to start working and baking out of Substance Designer. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to create a new graph here, so I'm just going to name this uh, ST Helmet or something. doesn't really matter. We're just going to be baking. So um, this all looks good. We're using the physically based metallic roughness. We're not actually going to be creating anything in Substance Designer. We're just going to bring in our uh, asset. Okay, so we need to right click on our uh, actual project. We need to link a 3D mesh. Um, what we're going to be using is the... Stormtrooper Helmet 02, I believe. No, actually, sorry. Let me navigate and actually find out where we're at. Let's go back to our OBJ. We're going to open this guy. Here we go. So, drag and drop this Stormtrooper Helmet. And we're looking pretty good. So, let's go ahead and start talking about baking. Uh, what we can do in here is right-click and say, Bank Model Information. Uh, this is what we'll get as soon as we open that window, and we need to try to bake uh, some ambient occlusion. So we'll go ahead and say ambient occlusion. Uh, we do not need to invert the normals. Uh, let's have our quality at very high. Okay, and then we have the folder structure. We're going to use PNG. Our output size 4096 by 4096, and our UV set is um, perfect how we need it. Uh, this right here, we can actually have a higher resolution normal map. So let's say if you're using a, um, a high resolution model and you want to bake it down to a game asset, we could actually navigate and find the normal map that would be the high resolution to bake our ambient occlusion from. But um, I think this will be fine for us. We'll go ahead and hit OK and see what we get. So it's going to take a little bit here for it to bake and we'll actually see it pop up here in the resources. Okay, so it is finished baking, so let's go ahead and double click. And here's our ambient occlusion map that has been baked from our low uh, resolution uh, hero mesh right here. Okay, looking good. Uh, you can see this gets really dark here on these uh, pieces on the corners of the mouth, depending on where the actual ray was fired from for the ambient occlusion. So you can see those are going to be very dark. And also you can see the under part of the lip, I guess you could say, on the mask it's going to be dark as well. So I think this will work good for us. Let's go ahead and continue baking. Let's right click and let's go to bake model information. Let's take this away. And I think we also would like to go ahead and do a curvature map. Okay. So again, let's look per pixel. Um, all this is fine. Uh, our folder structure is good. That's where we want to save it. And again, we don't want to use a higher resolution mesh. Um, so we'll go ahead and override that and we'll just use what we have here in the viewport. And you can see in no time at all, it bakes out a really nice curvature map. This is what we're going to be using to uh, define where on our model there is actual uh, curvature or where the actual polygons are folding in and out. So uh, we can use this for uh, weathering effects. We can use it for dirt or scratches and it's going to come in handy when we start using generators inside of uh, Substance Painter. So let's continue. Let's go ahead and say bake model information again. We are going to do a world space normals map. Again, I think everything is perfect. Let's hit OK. And in a few seconds, we'll be able to see that map pop up. OK, so that one took a little while to bake, uh, just a couple of seconds. Um, but now you can see this is going to be our world space normals map again. Uh, our generators are going to be able to take advantage of this map. So let's look at the menu here. Is there anything else that we need? I think we're going to be able to use the position. So let's bake that as well. All axes. Um, everything looks perfect. Let's go ahead and bake again. Okay, cool. So now we have the position data and we'll be able to use this inside of Substance Painter. Um, I think that's it. I think that'll be good. We'll go ahead and hide the software. Um, let's go ahead and actually save this in case we need to come back to. 
this project. So we'll say scenes, we'll put this in Substance Painter. I'll make a new folder here for you guys. Again, uh, if you download this on Gumroad, you'll be able to have uh, the entire scene files that you're seeing, everything that I have here. So let's call this uh, Substance Designer. And we'll make this kind of nice and neat. And we'll say ST Helmet. And we'll save. All right, so let's close Substance Designer. We'll come back to it if we need it. Um, I think that'll be a good stopping place. Um, I know this was a pretty boring tutorial, but it's going to come in handy. So if you guys already know how to bake inside of Substance Designer, uh, this is just kind of for those guys who maybe don't use it as much. Or if you haven't checked out the video, um, definitely check it out. Uh, we had a whole Substance Designer video with a Stormtrooper helmet. So um, check it out and let us know what you guys think. This was part two. and part three, we're actually going to get into Substance Painter and start talking about the interface and some of the different tools. So thanks a lot, guys. We really appreciate it. And we will see you in the next one. Take care.